Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about Paphiopetalum orchids. I will be making an update on all of my paths, tell you a little bit about them, what they've been through, and show you how they currently look like, because there have been some changes ever since last year, I think? I'll share with you down below in the description some videos so you know what I'm talking about. I used to have some major issues with these orchids, particularly with the model leafed ones. But as you will see, things have straightened up. So before we start the update, I will remind you that you have a lot of links down below in the description for a practical care guide and other things that I have been through with these orchids so you have a better picture. And also, excuse my voice, it's very, very, very early in the morning, but I do not have any time this week to film. So morning voice it's gonna be. Alrighty, so let's start with the mottled leafed ones because those are the ones which gave me the most issues. So I do have more mottled leaved paphiopetalums than green leaved. They are very, very charming. Even if they're not in bloom, they just look so, so pretty. So in my collection, I just have more of those. And it just so happens that these are the ones which gave me the most headaches. Pretty much, I suffered from a lot of leaf tip dieback. And when I say I, I mean they. Anyway, their leaves really didn't look good. They were not performing very, very well. And with these guys, you do wanna have really pretty foliage because it's one of their particularities. And well, the issue was the medium. They simply hated Leka. They could not adapt to that very dryish environment. P.S. These are semi-terrestrials. Some of them are terrestrials. They really, really hate too much air and not enough moisture. You will never see aerial roots on Paphiopetalums. You might see a root or two peeking out through the medium, but like proper aerial roots, no, you will not see. They don't grow in the air. If one of the roots starts to develop and it's not covered by medium, it will just stop growing. Anyway, so I decided last year or a little more than a year ago to repot them into organic medium and take a look at this. Not only do I have really, really pretty foliage, but I do have very, very pretty root systems as well. In the Leka setup, they used to produce roots as well, but I can definitely see a difference in the way they grow. In that medium, sometimes, and particularly if I slacked a little bit with watering, the root system really didn't grow all that well. And that was very visible on top, on the foliage as well. And of course, that was a problem. The more I used to water the orchid, the better the situation got. But here's the deal. I have to choose between more work for good results or find a sneaky solution that doesn't give me that problem in the first place. And I went for the second version. As you can tell, I just pot them all in organic medium. I'm using my typical mix of bark and sphagnum moss. I use the best growth sphagnum moss and the bark that I source locally, as you guys know. And here and there you will see a bit of perlite, maybe a few pieces of leka but I'm considering ditching those because this is not the environment for aeration fillers. And that's what those do. Leka itself doesn't retain all that much water and perlite, it's just not enough. They really don't do any harm if used in the correct ratios, but do I wanna hassle? No, so I'm not gonna use them from now on. That's the only reason for me not using them. If you do wanna use them, then absolutely go ahead and use them. They are great materials to offer more aeration, but you have to adapt it to your climate. If you have a very dry, very warm climate, obviously you will not need those fillers as much. Whereas if your orchid room environment is rather humid, maybe a little bit on the intermediate or cool side, more aeration in the medium will actually benefit you. Even if they're not epiphytic orchids, it doesn't mean they like to be suffocated and compacted into the medium. And a little side note before we get to see what everyone is, the older growths will slowly and surely wither off. After they're done blooming, they will never rebloom. These are sympodial orchids, not monopodials. They're not like Phalaenopsis. Even though they might look like it, they do have a rhizome, and the older growth simply feeds the new growth. And in time, it will deplete itself, so it's absolutely fine to have old growth withering off as the new growth matures. My leaf issues were not with the old growths, but with the new growths. And you don't 
don't want problems with new growths. Alrighty, so let's just look a little bit at the varieties that I have. This one does not have a tag, but I know what it is. You'll have the name on the screen because I cannot really remember it now. So I really should write that tag. But I had this guy in bloom. It has a really pretty dark colored flower. And even though the modeling on the leaves is not very visible, it's a really, really charming orchid. And I really love the flowers. In the back there, we have Paphiopetalum del Rossi. If you're a native English speaker, you will pronounce it as del Rossi. But as far as I know, in any other language, it's not the case. So don't worry about how you pronounce stuff. Everybody around the globe pronounces it differently. Here we have Paphiopetalum Magia Green. Oh, this is the one that I received a long time ago. It's the Climber Paphiopetalum. I'll link you down below to it. These are very old videos, so yeah, the quality is not all that good, but check out his history. He's a special orchid. And I do believe it's a Maudier type. He has that really nice green and um, white flower. Here we have one that we also had in bloom, beautiful flower. This is the Leucocytum cross with, oh, this is gonna be fun, soup. Suka Cooley. Okay, you will have the names of these orchids on the screen and more videos below. I really enjoy the foliage, really enjoy the flower as well. It's a different looking like Paphiopetalum. The flower reminds me of a little puppy. So do check out the description so you can see the flower. And this one is a no ID. This was the one sent by Max in Germany a long time ago. He has a little flower. He had a bud last year or at the beginning of the year. The bud did not develop. This was a very stressed little orchid, but he's doing great now. As far as I could see from opening the bud that fell, it might be a vinicolor Maudier. I'm not sure. We're gonna find out soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. And this is the other half of my model leafed Paphiopetalums. You can see that the pattern on the leaves can vary greatly from species or variety to the other. And of course, the flowers will vary as well. But just because a Paphiopetalum has very dark leaves doesn't necessarily mean it has a very dark colored flower. It is the case with the Maudier Vinicolors and maybe this is one of them. It is a Vinicolor. I'm not entirely sure about the hybrid. It's a no ID. This one, let's start with this one is an old orchid, but he suffered so, so, so much. Now he's doing okay, maybe you cannot see. This is a root tip right here, and we finally do have some roots inside the pot, um, but you can see that there's nothing to brag about here. He's not all that great doing. Now, I've been kind of messing up with him, in the sense that being that he's an old orchid, He's been through a lot. He's been through my spider mite trials before I developed my new, let's say, potion. You can find it down below in the description. He's been through the move, through the stress of no medium. He might even have fusarium. Um, I don't know. I've never actually seen the rhizome because there's nothing to remove or to cut away. He's been through the inorganic medium phase, leaf tip dieback, he's been through it all. And this is why he looks like this. But, you know, fingers crossed that he will make a recovery soon. He keeps producing new little shoots, but they're very, very tiny. Obviously the plant doesn't have a lot of energy, so they never develop into something of normal size, but yeah, that's his story. I'm obviously hanging on to him and doing my best not to stress him anymore but the amount of history he has, it's a lot and it shows. Here in the back, we have the Paphiopetalum Vanda M. Perman. I've never seen this guy in bloom. He did not bloom yet, but he has one of the most beautiful modeled leaves ever. Look at that. And also the root system is in tip top condition. He looks absolutely great but I'm really curious about the flower. So far, I am enjoying the foliage to the maximum. We have this deep green and this looks like a mural, doesn't it? It's wonderful, I love it. And in real life, the texture is really, really great on the foliage as well. In the back there, this is, I cannot really pronounce the name. This is Paphiopetalum, this guy. You'll have the name on the screen. I don't think I will pronounce it correctly. He's doing great as well, but he's, 
not very old. He has been in my collection for a year and a half or two and he did not grow as fast as the others. Maybe it's a particularity of the species. It is a species, it's not a hybrid. Maybe it's all the setback from the inorganic medium. I don't know. Root system is really, really good on this orchid, but he grows very, very slow. And as you can see, the bottommost leaves are kind of starting to die off. Might be normal, might not be, I don't know. But he's growing very, very, very slow. I do believe he's the slowest out of all of my paths. And that says something because paths are generally slow as they are. And this guy is the slowest in my entire collection. Next, this little guy here, this is the kind of a seedling, a young orchid. This is Paphiopetalum delanati, again, double I. Some of you will read it as delanatii, I don't. Look how pretty he is. Again, that beautiful, very deep green color and that mural-like variegation, I love it. Bonus, this orchid is supposed to be fragrant and this makes it one of the few Paphiopetalums which actually have a fragrance. Most Paphiopetalums on the market, the ones we can grow at least, don't have a fragrance. There might be uh, wild ones or related ones such as the Cypripediums, those might have a fragrance. I'm not sure I don't have any of them in my collection, but from all of these very popular Paphiopetalum hybrids and species, there isn't a lot when it comes to fragrance and this guy should be special. So ever since I received him, he grew a little bit. He also developed this little baby here, which is actually another shoot. I do hope that we will get a flower, but definitely not this year. He's doing great. I received this one from one of my viewers and I love it. And I'm really happy he has been doing great. And next to him, we have another one sent in by Jessica, I think last year. Yeah, I think the ending of last year. This is Paphiopetalum America or American Beauty. Not entirely sure. This is a hybrid. It did not bloom so far, but it grew a lot. The reason why I'm having issues inserting back the tag is because of the roots. <laughs> so let's make sure we don't damage them. He has been doing really, really great. I love his growth. He's a very vigorous Paphiopetalum and hopefully we're gonna have some blooms soon. So you can see there is a bit of visual variety with these orchids as well. And here are my green leafed paths. I have three more, but they didn't fit in the frame. These guys are typically larger than the other ones. With these guys, I didn't have as much leaf tip dieback, but I did notice a little bit of discoloration in the leaves. Now though, they look a little better as well. So I am drawing the conclusions that in my environment, at least, things are going better with this type of medium. So where should we start? Let's start from here. This is Paphiopetalum Rothschildianum, which is a very, very, let's say coveted and popular species. I purchased him as a pretty young plant and he grew so, so much. He is a big orchid and it's supposed to be a very big orchid. Root system looks amazing on this guy. At the same time, he drinks a lot of water, so have to be careful with watering. This is a multifloral and the flowers are absolutely amazing. Do Google the name so you see what I mean. It's one of those that everybody wants to have in their collection. I wanted to have it as well. I found it at a good price. Typically, they're pretty expensive. In front here, this is a newer acquisition, one of the last Paphiopetalums that I bought this spring. This is Paphiopetalum Rosy Dawn. I did not see a bloom. I don't know how it looks like. Oh, wait, that is such a lie. I completely forgot. Rosy Dawn actually bloomed for me. I'll link it to it down below. I'll search for it in my archive. It has a beautiful flower. So no, I didn't purchase it recently. It has been in my collection for at least a year and a half or so. The old growth that bloomed is this one and it's uh, withering off. And it has one, two, three new growths, which are kind of tiny at the moment. So I'm hoping maybe next year they will bloom again. It has a beautiful, beautiful flower, very elegant, light colored, yellowish flower, as far as I remember. And this one right here, this is the newer one. I have two that I purchased last in my collection and then I stopped purchasing Paphiopetalums. It's enough for now. Um, this is Paphiopetalum Reinhardt Ramble. And I don't know how he is supposed to look like. If I remember correctly, there wasn't a picture. I had the picture of the two parents, but we don't know how this guy will look like. 
he's doing fantastic again look at that root system and also we have buds you might not be able to see them because they are pretty new but do you see this formation here in the middle it's slightly swollen that's a bud so we have one two three buds on this Paphiopetalum. So that is very exciting, but I did purchase this guy as quite a mature orchid. It was almost fully grown when I purchased it and all it did in my care was just develop these buds. So I'm not sure if it's a slow grower, I presume it is. In the back here we have the American Hybrid, which is one of the easiest Paphiopetalums to grow. He has a beautiful big flower, check it down below again in the description. It appears from time to time in flower shops and many people actually have this hybrid because it's very, very popular, at least here in Europe, which is a little paradoxical because it's called American Hybrid. I don't know, do you guys find it in the US as often as we find it here? In the flower shops here, it's the Maudier and this guy. Very, very common in flower shops, no other types of paps. But he's a joy to grow and he doesn't appear to grow as slow as the others, so that's good. And these are the last of them. You can see that this one is slightly mottled. Theoretically, it shouldn't look like that, but hey, he's a hybrid of a mottled and not mottled one. So maybe one of the genes is starting to pick through a little bit more. Let's start on this side. This is the other Paphiopetalum that I recently acquired at the beginning of this year. And this is the Paphiopetalum Neri Candy. Again, I don't know how he's supposed to look like. I did not have a picture of the finished product <laughs> that sounds weird but he's looking pretty pretty great he appears to be quite mature and i am patiently waiting for some blooms here in the front we have an orchid which i received from one of my viewers a long time ago as a baby this is the paphiopetalum supardi and he isn't growing all that fast, really. I also had some infections on these leaves. I treated them in the Phalaenopsis video, the uh, Orchid Care for Beginners one, talking about the common ailments of Phalaenopsis. He helped us exemplify what we need to do in the case of a leaf infection. He's doing great as well. A little harder to see the roots, but they're there. The problem is he's growing very, 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 very slow. But I'm happy to see that he doesn't have issues anymore. And in the back there is an orchid we saw in bloom very, very recently, about two months ago. This is the Paphiopetalum, I thought I remembered the name, Judge Philip. It's a Philippinensis hybrid. Sally the Philippinensis was lost. He refused to create any type of root whatsoever. I don't know what was wrong with him, but yeah, we lost that guy slowly and surely. But one of the hybrids remains in the form of this guy. And he is quite a vigorous grower. As you can see, we have discoloration, or at least I believe it is. I repotted this guy into organic medium the last, I think about a month ago or a little more than that. Why? I don't know. Sometimes life gets in the way. So I hope that with the repotting, the color will return to the leaves. As I was saying, we saw him in bloom about two months ago. And we did have another bud forming here, but it's dry. And what happened was I treated them against spider mites as part of my twice a year preventative measure. And Sally, I think this bud was affected. I should have been a little bit more careful in that area, but that can happen. And with any treatment, be it store-bought fungicides, insecticides, whatever, with any treatment that contains water in it, you can have issues and it's just a reality. So we have to choose. Do we want bugs on her orchids or the potential issue here and there? Given I could have been a little bit more careful and I wasn't, I could have prevented this, but no harm done. I have a lot of crowns on this orchid and I just saw it in bloom, so it's okay. But a note for you guys, whenever you're doing treatments on your orchids, even if you make sure that all of the water evaporates super fast and also that you remove the excess, there's always that chance. But as I was saying, I do prefer not to have bugs on my plants and especially spider mites. And if at the time I simply didn't have time to take measures, then that's the way it's gonna be. I'm gonna live with the consequences. But yeah, that's what happened with this bud. It's okay, the next one to bloom, the next fan will be this one. And I'm thinking next year in the spring, we might have another flower spike. So no harm done. And this is currently where I keep my Paphio Petalums. If you remember, they were on the shelf with the LED lights. I think that light is a little bit too strong for them. I think the foliage will just look better here. So here is where they sit for the past month or so. 
and they seem to be okay but of course only in a few months we can tell the difference and I'll keep you up to date with that. These orchids are not highlight orchids and being that I do have lights from my African violet stands as well, so not only some natural light, I think they will be okay here as well. And also when they bloom they have a lot more space upwards because in the shelf I always had to move them when they had blooms. So I do believe this is a good place for them. I am also giving you a little sneak peek of my African violets. Look at this one. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? Um, so yeah. I'm currently working on this corner of the greenhouse. One of these days I will make another tour of the greenhouse or grow space, whatever. Do some more changes, take you along. But yeah, first of all, I have to figure out the life stuff and get rid of all of these issues that I need to attend to and then we can have fun. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this, you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q and and other fun orchid subjects and African violets from time to time. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.